Okay, guys, let's uh, get to the big stories of the week. We're going to start with Stephen Hoyles because, Hoyles-Lee, I reckon you were pretty... Oh, there it is. Pretty, that's it. You were pretty lucky to be let in the doors here at Easts after the previous week. What about Melbourne and your spray there? Are you going to be let into Melbourne anytime well, soon? Well, how's the reaction been? Uh, no, the, the reaction has been exactly what you'd expect it to be. I thought there were some good comments from the CEO coming out and justifying why he believes they should be there, and that's exactly what you'd expect. He addressed like, you directly. I'm Did not you? going to get into a slangy match with Hoylesy. Yeah. Baden look, Stevens, you know what? Steve-o, Bado. Well, the only thing I'd probably like to clarify is, and you picked me up on it when I said players go there only for money. The point I made, that's a professional sport. We all go everywhere for yeah, money. Yeah. But what I'd love to see that club be able to do is develop players like the Brumbies do, so players go down there for less money and they go down there to become a better like footy an player. Yeah, yeah. And, and they need to build an environment where you can go down there and come back a better footy player. And let's be honest, I don't think they've done that. And look, if we're going to go a comp without New Zealand, we need to have, if we're going to get the Sun Wolves and we're going to get a side from uh, the Pacific Islands, then we probably need to have five sides. But if we're going to step into this New Zealand competition like the, the chat is at the moment, I think we're going to be mad to do it with five teams. I think five teams from Australia versus five teams from New Zealand, mm. we will get lapped. Do you know what our average winning percentage is over the last five years against New Zealand sides? Have a guess, Sean. I know it's not great. It's around 15%. It's 15%. Like, yeah. that is shocking. Uh. And if we're going to go into a competition... With a fifth, and, and let's say we're good enough to bump it up to, to 30 or 35 or 40%. It's 40%. still a losing percentage. It's still a losing percentage. So we need Aussie fans to enjoy the footy like they are at the moment because every weekend there's two Aussie winners, unless there's a draw, of course. So yeah. that's my point there. I just don't think we've got the depth. I'm, I'm not, of course, not changing my mind on the depth issue in Australian rugby. Um, Steve obviously wants the holiday in Melbourne. <laughs> Backtracking no, no, no. a little bit. Yeah. I'll go one step further. Yeah. There is no. nothing in Melbourne I want to go to. Oh, there's a couple <laughs> there's of ski fields. fields. No, I'm more of a thread by man, yeah. man myself. Do you know what's to really be honest, up, I'm more Worcester. I right? was really continue. upset with your uh, efforts last week. Matt Tamilla, because he plays at East and at the Rebels, oh. and he once... Fell swoop, you called for the axing of East and the axing uh, of look, Melbourne. There's a good Matty horse called Fell Swoop. As Matty Tamil goes Run to sleep through, with his pillowcase full of cash, I don't think he's going to worry about my comments about the Rebels or the Beasties. Well, not everything's yeah. about money, Stephen. Oilsy, <laughs> <laughs> uh, you brought up New Zealand in the competition, yep. the Arapatu uh, review that happened. Interesting language from New Zealand rugby when they put out a statement as to what they were planning to do for Super Rugby. Expressions of interest was the term used from a Rugby Australia point of view, they could put the expression of interest in. What did you make of that, Drew? Uh, I just think we're getting caught up, when I say we, Australian rugby fans. Um, fans and community, that we're getting caught up in the wrong thing. Like, they've earned the right. Like, they've been performing, they've been the top performers on and off the field for a long time. So, in my opinion, they've earned the right to kind of dictate terms a little bit. Do I agree with what they're, they're suggesting? No, I don't. But. I don't think we're in a position where we can sit there and say, oh, they, they didn't speak to us nicely or they sound arrogant. Like, they have been performing on and off the field. The, the sponsorship stuff they've got, the... Oh, I, I know that they, I don't think they could survive on a, a five-team New Zealand local-based competition and maintain all their All Blacks within, um, you know, New Zealand shores. But, but I, I just think we're getting caught up in the wrong thing. Oh, they, they didn't speak to me nice. Like, who gives a shit? Like, work out what the issue is. What's best for Australian rugby? What's best for New Zealand rugby? Because I think we both... For both of us to thrive, we need to coexist and we need to find a way to make it work for both both nations. But to get, like, hung up on how someone spoke to us, like, who cares? Well, what I like about it is it forces Rugby Australia to go, OK, if that's how it's going to be, what are we going to create? So if COVID didn't hit, we would have gone through with another Super Rugby yeah. season next year, as was. And that would have been Despite us all been knowing wrong. that it was going in the wrong direction, despite the plummeting crowds, the plummeting ratings, the plummeting everything, it was going to be the same thing again next year. So COVID forces that, and now New Zealand are kind of forcing Rugby Australia's hand to say, you know what, we'll only take so, so and so, and now Rugby Australia has to come back and go, actually, no problems, this is what we're going to do. I kind of yeah. like that we're at this point, this... Crossroads. Some, someone had to take the lead. Someone has someone to take to the lead. It. If it's a little yeah. little poke like that, I say <laughs> yeah. go for it. And Rob Clark, to his credit, said, you know, I'm not having that. Yeah. I'm not having any of that. And had an, al an alternative option as well in bringing What's maybe the, the Sun option, Lou? He So he told me over the weekend it's bringing the Sun Wolves in uh, to an Australian sort of base comp with the five teams. He yep. said the, the idea would be not. Direct line, he told yeah, you. He did. Mm. Oh, I don't know about that. Uh, yeah, that's, that's right. Look that's what our Lou had a The Aussie Rocky show, that's what we can do. That's what we can do. Direct line. That's what we can do. 
Yeah. So the people of power, what's this pay gig like. you can talk about? Like. So he said, bring the Sunwolves in, five teams, don't cut a team. That would be their preference. Because we've spoken yep. about the cutting teams and how difficult, but how difficult that would be to, um, to sort of choose if you had to go yeah. to a three team especially. Yep. You you would cut the Rebels for a four team, a team pop, we know that. But yeah, that, that's the, alter that's the alternative option. Mate, and that's a quick heartbeat because you've yeah. you got an elevated heart rate yeah. and we're talking about <laughs> no, the Rebels. Uh, that competition that Rob suggests, a five team competition with the Sunwolves, I view that as a B standard competition if New Zealand aren't in it. And that's how we have to be. If we want to be the best, we have to play against the best. And let's not kid ourselves, they're not world champions and you can't take that away from South Africa. Sure. We're not getting South Africa and they're not the best in Super Rugby because half of their players are in Europe. More than half their players are in Europe. The best team in the world from the last 10 years is New Zealand. So I want us to be competing with the best. So we have to have an uh, amicable conversation that allows us to have a competition that's competitive. New Zealand don't, by the sounds of it, don't want five Aussie teams. I get that. And the, the thing I don't like about all of the conversation over the weekend, Lou, was the Pacific side and yeah. New Zealand saying, oh, we'll host them, or there's talk about them being in Auckland, and Australian rugby saying, mm. oh, no, we'll host them in Western Sydney. I'd like to think that the Pacific nations They've got a voice, yeah. could decide well, for should, themselves. Yeah. Yeah. And, and if you think they can't run a team, well, let's look at what Fiji did with the Drew and the NRC. They won that twice. Twice, yeah. They've also had a high-performing seven side that's won an Olympic gold medal. I've seen those guys all around the world. They run a high-performance program. They are very, very good. So they deserve a crack to pick what they want to have I just, I just love when you just get on a run. Like, look at you, you're up, you're up, you're up. <laughs> we don't know if you're smiling or you're frowning. Like, we just, I love this, Steve. Upside down Upside smile. Upside down. Love this, Steve. There we go. We didn't Brent, get this, over. At, yeah. we didn't get this at um, Fox. Didn't we? No. 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 Oh, I was gagged. <laughs> you, need, you, need, you, need, you, need, you needed more of a producer like me, boy, to get you, to get you moving in the right direction. Filming on Monday. <laughs> oh, me, boy, doing his thing. So, on the Pacifica team, though, where, where do you think they should, where do you guys think they should be based? Wherever they want to be. Well, I mean, that's it, my, it, I reckon. It depends on what this, like, the makeup of this Pacifica team is. If it's a makeup of, you know, Fiji, um, Samoa, Tonga, whether they're going to be based in one of those countries or if not the three. Or, I mean, let's just hear from them. Like, why, why is uh, New Zealand or Australian rugby dictating what the Pacifica team looks like, where they could be based? Like, against ten, about 10 years ago, we played against the, it was Pira. Remember the Pacific Island side that came yeah. out? It was Fiji, Samoa, Tonga, and they... Do you remember the 20, 2003 Pacific Islands team that came through? It was 04. Yeah, 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 like Sean and Lewaki. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And oh, Moses oh, Rauluni. Oh, how good were I they? I played against it. It wasn't good, Sean. <laughs> no, I, <wouldn't, laughs> yeah. I wasn't saying if I was playing. There's nothing, nothing good against it. But, like... They had a combined side between, the, uh, I think it was Fiji, Samoa, Tonga, and yeah. again, that's for them to decide. If you're looking at over there who's probably the, the most performing nation, if you look across yeah. the board, it's Fiji. Yeah. They've got a high performance program over there. They're probably the one that's, I would say, ready to ready do to it go, if they yeah. wanted to. But I know a lot of this is about COVID, but Fiji's pretty good COVID at the moment. I was moment, gonna say, I feel like COVID's not an issue with yeah. the Pacifica team because they're all in a pretty good position. Mm. So for them to sort of be traveling in and out, that, that doesn't seem like it, it would be a major issue. The Sunwolves might be, well, unless they base themselves here. I would hate here. for them to take it back with them. Yeah, that's true. Maybe yes. have to play it all over there, Drew. Because <laughs> we'd love to get to, I don't know, one of the yeah. Fijian Anywhere local on the local rock coast. <laughs> yeah. To, uh, Not a to, to shoot the show. In the Doronga, yeah. yeah. Singer Togo, happy yeah. to go there yeah. again. No yeah. problems. But I'm with you. I'm with, I think we're all in agreement on that one in particular. Yeah. Yeah. Pacifica chooses where Pacifica wants to play. So just quickly, do you want Australia in the New Zealand competition? Or do you want us to go it alone? I just want to have options on the table. I want someone to go, Oi, fans, you're all fans. What do you reckon? Like, this is what we're going with. And then this is the other option. Like, there's been not much of that communicated. Once we get that, then maybe we can work around it. See what, see what lines up where. Politically correct answer, isn't it? Yeah. Drew, what do you want to do? Uh, look, I, I think we need to coexist. Yep. Uh, I th I'm in agreement, so I don't think we can competitively go against New Zealand with five teams, against their five. Uh, but we need to find a solution where we can be... Comp like, at the end of the day, we need to be competitive. Whether, and, and I know it's, it's not just from a performance point of view, but it's also about you know, making Rugby Australia, again, financially viable, and that's by ha having results I'll, and I will all say sorts this. of things. It's not just about the, you know, being passionate about the team that you support and all that yeah. sort of stuff. It's yeah. about also if we support... You might support, support one of those fun. states, but we support Rugby Australia first and foremost, yeah. and we need to get that back up. And we, by doing that, we need cash, we need performance, we need success. If we do go that way, whatever way we go, I want a streamline of club to that next mm. level, that next yeah. level to international. That's all I care about. Yeah. So there's that connection from club. So when that, that thing rolls around, a kid who's been watching Michael Hooper or Matt Tamil here at their local ground goes, I'm going to now go watch them at the Waratahs and at the Rebels. Yeah.